Matthew chapter 15 Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered them, Why do you also disobey the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother. And he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever may tell his father or his mother, whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me, is a gift devoted to God. He shall not honor his father or mother. You have made the commandment of God void because of your tradition. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine rules made by men. He summoned the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, that which enters into the mouth doesn't defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father didn't plant, will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter answered him, Explain the parable to us. So Jesus said, Do you also still not understand? Don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly and then out of the body? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual sins, thefts, false testimony, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile the man. Jesus went out from there and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a Canaanite woman came out of those borders and cried, saying, Have mercy upon me, Lord, you, son of David. My daughter is severely demonized. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered, I wasn't sent to anyone but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, It is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Jesus departed there and came near to the Sea of Galilee. And he went up into the mountain and sat there. Great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they put them down at his feet. He healed them, so that the multitude wondered when they saw the mute speaking, injured whole, lame walking, and blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away fasting or they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where should we get so many loaves in a deserted place as to satisfy so great a multitude? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? They said, seven and a few small fish. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks and broke them, and gave to the disciples, and the disciples to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up seven baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. Then he sent away the multitudes, got into the boat, and came into the borders of Magdala. 
Chapter 16 The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there will be no sign given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. He left them and departed. The disciples came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They reasoned among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. Jesus, perceiving it, said, Why do you reason among yourselves, you of little faith, because you have brought no bread? Don't you yet perceive, neither remember, the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you don't perceive that I didn't speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he didn't tell them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say John the Baptizer, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my assembly and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Then he commanded the disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and the third day be raised up. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this will never be done to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to everyone according to his deeds. Most certainly I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste of death, until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Chapter 17 After six days, Jesus took with Him Peter, James, and John, His brother, and brought them up into a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and His garments became as white as the light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, let's make three tents here, one for you, 
one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were very afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and don't be afraid. Lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. His disciples asked him, saying, Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered them, Elijah indeed comes first and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has come already, and they didn't recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted to. Even so, the Son of Man will also suffer by them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the baptizer. When they came to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers grievously, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him. The demon went out of him, and the boy was cured from that hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why weren't we able to cast it out? He said to them, Because of your unbelief, for most certainly I tell you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind doesn't go out except by prayer and fasting. While they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered up into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day... He will be raised up. They were exceedingly sorry. When they had come to Capernaum, those who collected the didrachma coins came to Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the didrachma? He said, Yes. When he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth receive toll or tribute? From their children? or from strangers? Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Therefore the children are exempt, but, lest we cause them to stumble, go to the sea, cast a hook, and take up the first fish that comes up. When you have opened his mouth, you will find a stator coin. Take that and give it to them, for me and you. Chapter 18 In that hour, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to himself and set him in the midst of them and said, Most certainly, I tell you, unless you turn and become as little children, you will in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whoever therefore humbles himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such little child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him that a huge millstone should be hung around his neck and that he should be sunk in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of occasions of stumbling, For it must be that the occasions come, but woe to that person through whom the occasion comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life maimed or crippled 
rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the eternal fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into the Gehenna of fire. See that you don't despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has one hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, doesn't he leave the ninety-nine, go to the mountains, and seek that which has gone astray? If he finds it, most certainly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine which have not gone astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go, show him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained back your brother. But if he doesn't listen, take one or two more with you, that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the assembly. If he refuses to hear the assembly also, let him be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Most certainly, I tell you, whatever things you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever things you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Again, assuredly, I tell you that if two of you will agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him until seven times? Jesus said to him, I don't tell you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to reconcile accounts with his servants. When he had begun to reconcile, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But because he couldn't pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and kneeled before him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will repay you all. The Lord of that servant, being moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him one hundred denarii. And he grabbed him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. He would not but went and cast him into prison until he should pay back that which was due. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were exceedingly sorry and came and told to their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord called him in and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow servant even as I had mercy on you? His Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father will also do to you if you don't each forgive your brother from your hearts for his misdeeds. Chapter 19 It happened when Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee and came into the borders of Judea beyond the Jordan. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Pharisees came to him, testing him, and saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? He answered, Haven't you read that he who has made them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall join to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, 
Don't let man tear apart. They asked him, Why then did Moses command us to give her a bill of divorce and divorce her? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been so. I tell you that whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries her when she is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If this is the case of the man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all men can receive this saying, but those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then little children were brought to him, that he should lay his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Allow the little children and don't forbid them to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to ones like these. He laid his hands on them and departed from there. Behold, one came to him and said, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not offer false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things have I observed from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sad, for he was one who had great possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, Most certainly, I say to you, a rich man will enter into the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus said, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then Peter answered, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Most certainly I tell you that you who have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on the throne of his glory, you also will sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake will receive one hundred times and will inherit eternal life. But many will be last who are first and first who are last. Chapter 20 For the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is the master of a household, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. To them he said, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, and did likewise. About the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. He said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. 
he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and you will receive whatever is right. When evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise each received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the master of the household, saying, These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me for a denarius? Take that which is yours and go your way. It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Isn't it lawful for me to do what I want to with what I own? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, Behold, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify, and the third day he will be raised up. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, kneeling and asking a certain thing of him. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these my two sons may sit, one on your right hand and one on your left hand, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you shall be your bondservant, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they went out from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. The multitude rebuked them, telling them that they should be quiet. But they cried out even more, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. Jesus stood still and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? They told him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received their sight, and they followed him. Chapter 21 When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethsphagi, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village that is opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their clothes on them, 
and he sat on them. A very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The multitudes who went before him and who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? The multitude said, This is the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus entered into the temple of God and drove out all of those who sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the money changers' tables and the seats of those who sold the doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children who were crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Did you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing babies you have perfected praise? He left them and went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. He said to it, Let there be no fruit from you forever. Immediately the fig tree withered away. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree immediately wither away? Jesus answered them, Most certainly I tell you, if you have faith and don't doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you told this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it would be done. All things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. When he had come into the temple, The chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority do you do these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, which, if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? They reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will ask us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all hold John as a prophet. They answered Jesus and said, We don't know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. He came to the second and said the same thing. He answered, I go, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Most certainly I tell you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. When you saw it, you didn't even repent afterward that you might believe him. Hear another parable. There was a man who was a master of a household, who planted a vineyard, set a hedge about it, dug a wine press in it, built a tower, leased it out to farmers, and went into another country. When the season for the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the farmers to receive his fruit. The farmers took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they treated them the same way. But afterward, he sent to them his son, saying, They will respect my son. But the farmers, when they saw the son, said among themselves, This is the heir. 
Come, let's kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the Lord of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those farmers? They told him, He will miserably destroy those miserable men and will lease out the vineyard to other farmers who will give him the fruit in its season. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same was made the head of the corner. This was from the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a nation bringing forth its fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whoever it will fall, it will scatter him as dust. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke about them. When they sought to seize him, they feared the multitudes because they considered him to be a prophet.